Kay's Magical Journey Through India. Part 1 Going to India. Kay's next adventure began with a mysterious rustle from the bookshelf. As he searched for the source, a dusty old atlas tumbled down, opening to a page on India. A new map, vibrant with the tricolor of the Indian flag, beckoned him closer. Written alongside were Indian greetings, Namaste for hello and Arvida for goodbye. He whispered the words, feeling a connection to this distant land. The map seemed to pulse with the rhythm of India, its borders outlining a country steeped in history. As Kay touched the page, his room filled with the aroma of spices and the sound of sitar music. In a swirl of colors, he felt himself transported. Kay opened his eyes to the bustling streets of India, greeted by smiles and nods. People passed by saying, Namaste, with hands clapped together. Each greeting was a warm welcome to a country of rich traditions and vibrant landscapes. With a deep breath, Kay stepped forward, ready to immerse himself in the wonders of India. Part 1 Going to India Q&A Question 1 How did Kay's adventure to India begin? Question 2 What did the mysterious rustle from the bookshelf lead to? Question 3. What did the Indian map on the atlas look like? Question 4. What were the Indian greetings mentioned in the story? Question 5. How did Kay feel when he touched the page of the map? Part 2. Rangoli Kay found himself in a quiet Indian courtyard where families gathered to create rangoli. Women and children were drawing on the ground with colored powders. We make rangoli to decorate and to welcome everyone, a woman said, inviting Kay to join. With a small bowl of powder, Kay began to pour, forming simple lines and curves. Use all the colors, a child suggested, and soon Kay was blending reds, blues, yellows, and greens, creating a rainbow on the earth. He watched the others make complex shapes like peacocks and flowers, their hands moving with practice ease. As the sun climbed higher, the courtyard transformed into a canvas of vibrant designs, each rangoli a unique burst of creativity. Laughter and chatter filled the air, mixing with the scent of marigolds. The tradition of Rangoli, Kay learned, was more than just art. It was a symbol of hospitality and a celebration of life's everyday joys. At the day's end, the community stood back to admire their work. The Rangoli told stories without words, 
and K felt he contributed to something enduring and beautiful. Part 2 Rangoli Q and A. Question 1 Where did K find himself in this part of the story? Question 2 What were families doing in the quiet Indian courtyard? Question 3 How did K contribute to the Rangoli drawings? Question 4 what did the Rangoli represent besides being art? Question 5. How did the courtyard transform as the day progressed? Part 3. Diwali The night sky in India sparkled with a million lights. It was Diwali. The Festival of Lights. Kay watched as families lit small oil lamps called Diaz and placed them outside their homes. The whole city seemed to be glowing. Diwali is when we celebrate the victory of good over evil, a new friend explained. They gave Kay a Dia and he lit it carefully. The small flame flickered, joining the constellation of lights around them. Fireworks burst overhead, casting brilliant colors against the dark sky. People were smiling, sharing sweets, and exchanging gifts. Kay felt the warmth, not just from the lights, but from the people, too. Everywhere he looked, there were candles and lanterns. The lights were symbols of hope and new beginnings. Kay realized that Diwali wasn't just about the bright lights. It was about the light in everyone's heart. As the night ended, Kay thought about the stories behind Diwali. He felt grateful to be part of this festival of joy, to experience the spirit of togetherness, and to share the light of hope with new friends. Part 3 Diwali Question 1. What illuminated the night sky during Diwali? Question 2. What is Diwali and what does it celebrate? Question 3. What did K receive during Diwali and what did he do with it? Question 4. How did people celebrate Diwali in the story? Question 5. What did Kay realize about Diwali as the night ended? Part 4 Food Kay sat cross-legged in a warm, spice-scented kitchen, watching a woman roll out thin discs of dough. These are chapatis, she said, placing them on a hot griddle. K bit into the warm bread and loved its soft, comforting taste. Next was mango lassi, a drink bright as the Indian sun. Its sweet, creamy flavor of ripe mangoes mixed with yogurt was refreshing. It cools the heart. The woman's husband chuckled, pouring Kay another glass. Then came dessert, kheer, a creamy rice pudding. The woman explained, kheer 
is for special occasions. It was sweet and rich with a hint of cardamom and nuts. Eating it, Kay felt like he was tasting a piece of Indian tradition. With each bite, Kay discovered the stories of the land. The cuisine was a blend of history and home. Each recipe passed down through generations. This wasn't just a meal. It was a lesson in Indian culture. A journey through flavors that spoke of the country's diverse heritage and the warmth of its people. Part 4. Food Question 1. Where was Kay in this part, and what was happening in the kitchen? Question 2. What were the different types of food and drinks Kay tasted? Question 3. How did the woman describe Kier, and when was it eaten? Question 4. What did the cuisine teach Kay about Indian culture? Question 5. What was the significance of chapatis, mango, lassi, and kheer? Part 5. Indian Lanterns Kay wandered through a lantern festival in India, where the night came alive with a soft golden glow. Artisans displayed their lanterns, inviting the festival goers to admire their work. Each lantern was a kaleidoscope of colors with patterns that told stories of Indian myths in daily life. These lanterns are our pride, an old craftsman told Kay, showing him how to fold paper and cut designs. Kay's fingers moved carefully, trying to mirror the craftsman's skill. It wasn't just about making something pretty, it was about keeping a tradition alive. When Kay lit the candle inside his lantern, the paper walls blossomed with light, casting a warm dancing shadow. The lanterns represent our hopes, a young artist said, and they guide us like stars guide travelers. As the sky darkened, the lanterns floated up, rising like fireflies. Kay felt as if he were part of a timeless ritual, a moment of beauty in unity. Making Indian lanterns wasn't just an art. It was a celebration of craftsmanship and dreams woven into the fabric of Indian culture. Part 5. Indian Lanterns Question 1. Where did Kay wander and what was happening there? Question 2. What did the lanterns in the festival represent? Question 3. What did Kay learn from the old craftsman about lantern making? Question 4. How did Kay feel when he lit the candle inside his lantern? Question 5. What did the lantern symbolize to the young artist? Part 6. Taj Mahal 
Kay's eyes widened as he beheld the Taj Mahal, a marvel of white marble against the blue Indian sky. The grand monument, with its perfect symmetry, stood as a testament to love and loss. Its walls were adorned with intricate carvings and precious stones, each detail a piece of history. A guide shared stories of its construction, how artisans and architects came from all over to build this wonder. It's not just a building, it's poetry in marble. He said, Kay touched the cool stone, filling the stories of the past. He learned about the emperor who built it for his beloved queen and how the Taj Mahal was a symbol of their internal love. The engineering marvels behind its construction left Kay in Alway, the way the minarets were built slightly outwards to protect the main structure and how the colors of the wall change with the daylight. Kay sat by the reflecting pool. The Taj Mahal's image mirrored in the water. It was a place where history and artistry came together, leaving him inspired by the beauty and debt of India's past. Part 6 Taj Mahal Question 1. What was Kay's reaction upon seeing the Taj Mahal? Question 2. What stories did the guide share about the Taj Mahal? Question 3. What did the Taj Mahal symbolize in the story? Question 4. What details about the Taj Mahal left K and Awe. Question 5. How did K feel as he sat by the reflecting pool? Part 7. Food In a bustling Indian market, K had his first taste of a samosa, the crispy pastry filled with spice, potatoes, and peas was a burst of flavor with each bite. Samosas are a favorite snack here, the vendor explained, smiling at Kay's enjoyment. Then, an aroma of spices led Kay to a stall where masala chai was being brewed. The tea mixed with milk and a blend of spices like ginger and cardamom, was warming and aromatic. As Kay sipped, he felt a sense of comfort, the kind that only a good cup of tea can bring. With every taste, Kay understood more about Indian food, how each spice and ingredient played its part, creating something greater than just a meal. It was about the joy of eating and the love put into each dish. The spices don't just add flavor, they tell our stories, a friendly local said, sharing a cup of chai with him. Kay realized that in India, Food was more than sustenance. It was a celebration of life, a way to connect and share experiences. Part 7. Food Question 1. 
What did K taste for the first time in the bustling Indian market? Question two: How did the vendor describe samosas? Question three: What was special about masala chai, and how did it make K feel? Question four: What did the friendly local say about the spices in Indian food? Question five: What did food represent in the story? Part eight: Going home. K stood in his room, the magical map of India on his desk. Its colors still seemed to dance, holding the essence of his incredible journey. He gently folded the map, a sense of accomplishment filling him. As he looked around his room, it felt different now, filled with the spirit of adventure, and the echoes of India. The chapatis, the rangoli, the bright Diwali lights. Each memory. Was a precious piece of his journey. K felt a mix of joy and a little sadness. He had discovered so much in India, the flavors, the traditions, and the warmth of its people. Each experience was like a gift, deepening his understanding of a world so different from his own. He placed the map back in its secret spot, wondering if he would ever find another. The thought of future adventures made him smile. For now, the memories of India would stay with him, a reminder of the magic and mystery that lay hidden in the corners of his own home. Part Eight: Going Home. Question One: What did K feel as he looked at the magical map of India on his desk? Question Two: What changed in K's room after his journey to India? Question three: Where did K place the map at the end of the story? Question four: What were the memories of India like for K? Question five: How did the story end, and what did K feel about future adventures?